Welcome to the Alyssa Goodman Show. And today I have Zilana Momini, doctor, PhD, clinical psychologist. And last year she came out with a book, 21 Days to Resilience. I absolutely love the title of this book because I feel like we all need to learn how to be resilient on a more day-to-day basis. So I had to have her on my show to actually maybe train me a little bit about how to be more resilient on a day-to-day basis. But I think it affects very much health and, of course, everything that's happening out there in the mental anxiety, depression you know, with everybody. So um, especially in the world we're living in today with what's going on in politics and the environment. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so fun to have you finally. I know. I got you. A long time coming. (laughs) I know. I've been asking for a while, (laughs) but yeah, no, thank you so much. So, you know, when did this journey all begin? Well, um, I think, you know, I study human behavior, so I've been right. doing it since, you know, I was born, essentially. Really? Um, but I've al- I mean, I've always so been really... So why since you are born? Well, I've as... always been really curious about how people, not obviously not since I was born. Yeah, but, but you as know, little, as you little, were young. As young as I can remember, I've always been, you know, interested in how people behave and what makes you take one situation and, you know, someone else take the exact same situation and just react completely differently. Um, that was really interesting to me. So yeah. I wanted to know more and... You know, from a very young age, I started doing internships at like the local school, local universities, like in the psychology department, really kind of figuring out what aspect of psychology I wanted to do and just learning mm. more about the field. Right. Um, you know, I quickly became disenchanted with its really strong focus on pathology and what's yeah. wrong with you. And right. even though that's really important and mm-hmm. a big part of it, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm super supportive of scientists and researchers who are doing that kind of work, I personally was driven more toward, you know, instead of looking at what's wrong, let's look at what's right. You know, like, what Mm -hmm. are we doing well? What are our strengths? Like, Mm -hmm. what can we really build upon? And obviously we all have- I love that aspect. Yeah, I mean, we all have symptoms of something. I mean, there's days where I'm really anxious, I could possibly have an anxiety (laughs) disorder, and then there are days where I'm maybe a little bipolar. You know, I mean, like, you know, it's, and I don't mean to be- That's a good point, because I mean, that's true. Some people really are hard on themselves when they have those days. Yeah, and I don't mean to And they go down the rabbit hole. Totally, and I I don't mean to make light of people who really do have serious disorders. I know. you know, we've all been there, you know, so it's, that's not what I'm saying. But what, what I am saying specifically is that I do think that the general population, I think, you know, we tend to focus too much on, oh my God, you know, I have this symptom or I, this is wrong with me. And I really, and then it just makes it more, it sort of illuminates it and makes it more intense than it really is instead of sort of repositioning and refocusing, which is the work that I now do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So you've, so then how did the book come up? How did resilience come into the picture and all of so that? So I, so, uh, so, uh, you know, through my journey in, you know, grad school, um, I studied happiness and I was mm-hmm. really into that. It was just when positive psychology was sort of coming to a head and it was an exciting right. time. Right. Um, and I really looked deeply into happiness and I started to realize that the more we as a culture and just clients I work with focus on happiness, the Mm -hmm. less happy we become. Mm -hmm. And so it was this big quandary to me. I was kind of like, wait, what's going on here? Um, Yeah. And and, and what I realized is that- So the more we focus on it, the less you saw- The more obsessed and, 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 you know, we become with like, oh, I've always got to be happy. happy, Why am I not happy? Or I'm so unhappy. It just, it makes us focus on our shortcomings. It makes us focus on- What you were saying earlier again. Right. Mm -hmm. And and when we anchor our goals in a fleeting feeling, Mm -hmm. we're setting ourselves up for failure. Right. 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 Happiness is great. It feels awesome. But at the end of the day, we can't always be happy. It's not the end all. Well, and we can't always be happy. It's just not feasible. Mm -hmm. Um, We can't always be positive. In fact, we shouldn't be. Right. You know, um, it's human Mm -hmm. and we have a gamut of emotion and we should feel the feelings and and go through that. And and instead of push it away, we should digest them. That's another conversation. (laughs) But um, in terms of sort of how resilience came about, so I sort of became disenchanted with this whole push and and happiness and um, started to really look at, okay, well then what is it what is the sort of the formula to the most successful content people that I know or that exist, you know? And I started to really look at their stories. I started to delve deeper into the research and it really became super clear that it's it's hmm. that they're resilient. It's not that they're happy. It's yeah. not that they're yeah. even, you know, it, that they contain all of those things, but the overarching umbrella theme is that they are resilient. Mm-hmm. And um, I quickly realized that, you know, we all know resilience is important, right? but we don't know how to build the skill. And it really it's is so a true. skill. 
it's not something we're born with or without. It's something that is that not we a learn. word that comes up very often. You know, I don't see a lot of par parents talking to their kids or people having conversations about resiliency, right? And you know, the strength of that, right? And so. unfortunately, um, you know, it, it it we're now quickly realizing how critical mm -hmm. resilience really is, mm -hmm. um, not just to survival, obviously, but to thrive. Right. Really. And to function and to if you do want to be happy, listen, you got to be resilient. Like exactly. you can't just be happy and not be resilient. Mm -hmm. So in my book, I really wanted to create a toolkit, like a how to guide mm -hmm. to building up that skill set. And I sort of see it like a boot camp right. for jump starting the skill. Obviously, you're not just going to read the book and be resilient. Right. 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 But it's going to help and mm -hmm. it's going to help build that habit. And then you've got to do the hard work and continue it. Right. Right. And so I build it out into it's almost like there's aspects of journaling. There's aspects. There's different activities you can do. And it's all very simple, digestible things for people who are busy, who, you know, we're all we all are in the daily grind and right. who really has time to, you know, do these lengthy things. So right. I really wanted something that's easy and applicable. So what are a few of the things in the book like that so, you can do that pop, you know, that are super strong in terms of yeah, helping I mean, you on I, this road. I build it out into 21 key elements um, that underlie resilience. So things like altruism, realistic optimism, mm -hmm. um, you know, even spirituality, things mm -hmm. like that, that really do make a difference. Um, emotional agility. So understanding, you know, not just what emotions you're experiencing. Oh, I'm sad. I'm mad. I'm angry. But right. really getting into the nitty gritty, like so not the am basics. I but lonely or am I jealous? Mm -hmm. like, those are two very different feelings, but they seem like the same, possibly. True. So it's really being able to resilient people are able to dissect their feelings and not let their feelings get the best of them right. either. So, right. um, you know, so those are some of like the overarching key traits. Mm -hmm. And then um, in terms of just simple things we can do, um, you know, okay, let's take mindfulness, for example. Mm -hmm. Resilient people obviously are, are quite mindful, but it doesn't right. sort of occupy a huge chunk of their time, interestingly enough. Um, they, they might meditate, mm -hmm. which is great if you can, but right. not everybody has that skill set. Right. And frankly, not everybody has the time. So something you can do to be mindful just in the moment is rub your palms together. Really? Physically, just, just tune rub into your... your body. Okay. And if, I, if you rub your palms together, you see how you like automatically just kind of tune into the moment. Hmm. And it's like, oh, I'm And so you're I'm a little here. bit more present. So you're present. You're like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here right now. Uh -huh. This is my body. This is my space. This is what I'm occupying. And it takes one second. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, hi, I'm here, right? <laughs> Hello um, again yeah. to myself. Right. Um, That's interesting. Another thing that I talk about in the book a little bit is, um, you know, vision boards are lovely. Yeah. They're great if you have time. Time consuming. Again, time. Mm -hmm. um, so create a space where you occupy most of your time that acts as a vision board in a way. Okay. So if it's your office. So where you office, work or, okay. If it's your office, mm -hmm. if it's your bedroom, if it's like wherever you, if, it could be your dining room, it could be anywhere that you spend a lot of time, mm -hmm. make sure that's a reflection on the life you want to be living. Okay. Okay, that you have pictures yeah. around that inspire you, that mm -hmm. colors are, you know, something that really motivate you. So really think about your space and not yeah. just throw pillows around. Right. You know, make it really something that you're choosing actively. Um, so I love that one too. Like that. Yeah, because I find that most people always are are complaining about their space. Right, right. They're not, you know, they're not happy in it. It's just not what they want. And I don't think people really realize how important that is. It's critical. Yeah, it really is critical. And you know, unfortunately, our schools and every—I mean—they sort of just throw things together and don't think too much right. about how much time, you know, even our kids are occupying in this space. And it's right. unfortunate. Yeah. It really does has, have a huge effect on our mental health. Speaking of kids. Yeah. <laughs> are you teaching kids how yeah. to be resilient too? So are you... I, I do a lot of seminars. I'm doing a lot of speaking right mm -hmm. now. Um, and I'm, I'm moving deeply into the parenting genre. Okay. For sure. I think there was just a natural um, transition when, you know, adults and parents hear what I speak about. Right. You know, they're like, wait, how do we get our kids to be more resilient? I mean, that's sort of you know, mm -hmm. their, their next question always. Exactly. And, um, I am doing parenting seminars and, um, that's, that's an interesting one. Is um, that, how different is that from, you know, adults? it's, it's different in that 
parents are their own children's biggest crutch <laughs> to building resilience. <laughs> that is true, right? And it's I know you that know, with my own. Yeah, it's not easy to look a parent in the eye mm-hmm. who I know loves their children so much mm-hmm. and wants the best for their child yeah. so much, but really does everything to prevent the child from thriving <sighs> in, once they're out of their house and their domain. That. But do you know what I mean? I do. And, I do. And I relate and in listen, every I'm way. A, I'm a parent. Mm-hmm. I've got a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Totally get it. Mm -hmm. Um, But we've got to back off if we want our kids to develop into anyone who can manage their circumstances. So you're talking about we're just uh, we're over we're overprotective and we're the helicopter parent type we thing. We are just, we are way too involved in their life. We are the helicopter life. generation. Yeah. We, we do not want our kids to be uncomfortable. I know. And that is handicapping them. The worst thing Emotionally in the world. and, you know, in every element. So what I see now in this younger generation is huge skyrocketing rates of depression and anxiety, you know, really that we've overscheduled them so much that mm-hmm. now they just don't even know how to to entertain themselves or do anything that isn't technology related or right. you know striving to do something or be something mostly right. for their parents 24 7 not for themselves right exactly um yeah you know there's something really developmentally important about you know just sitting in your space mm-hmm. being bored mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. finding things to do right it, there's something really important about that and there's we're missing that with the younger generation um, and also, you know, there's always that element of technology. Yeah. So their brain is developing very differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we have to balance that for them as well. So, listen, I I don't want to make it sound like, oh, parents are at fault. It's all your parents' right. problem. But, you know, there's a, we've developed a huge ego mm-hmm. when it comes to parenting. Mm-hmm. And our kids right now, the way that when I work with clients, it's like, oh, my kid, my kid is, is a reflection on me. So mm-hmm. he's got to be perfect right in whatever way i see perfect to be right and um you know it's hard to tell a parent listen you've got to stop doing Mm. things for him and you've got to really back off and even if he's sad you don't need to make it better for him in fact you shouldn't you should let him feel the sadness you should let him feel the consequences of his actions you know if your kid forgets their lunch at home don't bring it don't rush to school to bring don't bring it at all I absolutely love that. They no, will I totally get. Yeah, never forget right. their lunch again. Right, exactly. If they didn't do their homework. Yep, their grades are going to suffer. But that's the natural consequence of their behavior. You're and almost going to learn. You're almost talking about like old-fashioned parenting in some ways. Going it back is. to the, you know, because my parents raised me like, yeah, like you're talking about. Yeah. They didn't. There was I wasn't taken care of in every, and totally. I was bored at times. And I remember that boredom was the best thing that could have ever happened right. to me. Because so now you, when I had you're room alone. To, you know, to figure out who you I was, know too. what you do. You, yeah. Yes, and you figure out who you are. And, yeah. and, you know, there's aspects of the older generation that we really don't want, right? Mm-hmm. So we're sort of fighting against that. So I think there's a balance. I think, right. you know, you obviously have to do what's best for your family and for yourself. Yeah. Um, but it is funny because, like, my mother-in-law, you know, when we first had kids, she walked in the house and she had four kids and they're all great kids. Yeah. And she walks out she's like, wait, you're sitting and playing Legos with them? Like they, they can do it on their own. They right. should be playing on their own. Why right. are you enga- like sitting playing with them? And mm. I used to get so stressed if I didn't carve out, you know, an hour Time. a day to play with them and read to them and do Legos and puzzles <laughs> and all, you know. And it's like, she's like, I never really, I mean, I played with my kids, but I didn't yeah. like sit and you know, do all these things. And, you know, she's like, I had things, other things to do. And I'm right. thinking, wait, other things, right? right? And I think what's happened is that, unfortunately, you know, our children have really become the center of our universe mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they know that mm-hmm. and it's not healthy mm-hmm. for anybody. Right. Right. So because that's what I'm working. Wow. Again, <laughs> and, and I'm trying to help parents understand that it is to their children's detriment, yeah. really. And trust me, it's hard for me, too. I get it. It's so. also to our detriment, don't you think? I mean, Hopefully. to your, you know, to our detriment to have, to create these beings our kids to think that we do, that the world does revolve around them mm-hmm. i mean it, it kind of sometimes makes your life miserable right. as the older they get or younger so 100%. it's worth kind of both. i can't even tell you how i mean i've spoken to rooms of you know thousand people whatever ever age yeah and i always get the person 
multiple people, oh, my kid is still living with me in their 40, <sighs> like 35. <sighs> and, you know, she's got to, she's working hard. She's, you know, sometimes cleaning up after herself. Like, I don't know what to do. And she's a lovely child and she's kind. And, and so, and it's like, so, and, <sighs> and they say, well, so how do I, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, do you want her to move out? Or not, because yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know if you do. Because mm-hmm. it seems to me like you want her to right. stick around right. for yourself. And what right? do you think? What is the answer that you kind of feel you get from that? You've got That's to, a big question these days. You, for for that, yeah. like moving, you've got to set a timeline mm-hmm. and make mm-hmm. a plan yeah. to move out. Right. You don't want your thirty-five-year-old child living with no. you. You don't want your thirty-year-old child living with you. I mean, in some dire circumstances, Even your twenty-two-year-old <laughs> who's just graduated from college. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to do the same. Right. I, mean, I can't right. imagine telling my daughter, like, you don't have a home here. You can't right. come back. But it's critical that they find their own two feet. Yeah, I know. You know, and, and understand that, you know, as parents, we are there to love and support and empathize with our kids. Yeah. But we are not there to overdo it for them right. and to really just create this spongy life where they really don't ever have to do much. Right. Right. It is. Our job is to set them free, yeah. not to tether them to yeah. us. And that's um, really what's happening. Um, and it's sad. And I see that with some clients that are young, you know, same. And it's causing like health issues. It's causing anxiety and depression because they don't know how to tap into their resiliency. They don't know who they are. They don't know how to like figure out. They're scared to move out into the world. How can they though? I mean, yeah. They've never been even, ha- they've never had practice. Yeah. You know, I take it's so, a simple, most simple metaphor: puzzles. You know, mm-hmm. how do you how do you do a puzzle? You practice puzzles since you're little. You work on puzzles. Right. Life's problems are puzzles. If yeah. you've never had an opportunity to fix things for yourself, if your parent is always fixing, fixing your pu- puzzles, mm-hmm. what are you gonna? Do? How are you gonna fix a puzzle later? Right. It's just it just takes practice. And it's common sense. Yeah, it takes practice. Well, yes, but again. For- yeah. For the most part. It's if you... skill building. It's yeah. skill building. We can't right. learn to problem solve unless we're given an opportunity. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this has been so amazing. I could talk to you like for hours Aww. because it's just like, it really is so crucial, like what you're doing and talking yes. about. And it's just, I mean, I hear it, but I, I don't think that people really have, are being taught the skills. Right. And yeah, I'm trying that's... to get this into curriculum at mm-hmm. schools. I'm trying to, you know, do seminars. I have private clients. Right. Um, so it's definitely something people are tuning into and listening to a bit more these days. Um, but if I were to say anything, it's just, you know, kind of forget being happy. Like, just yeah. stop. Right. It's not doing a, a, it's it, doing a disservice. Focus mm. instead on what makes you healthy in your life. What what gives you meaning? What gives you purpose? Mm-hmm. You know, and build your resilience. And and I talk about all those tools in the book. And I right. you know and, and more. So right. Yeah. I know happiness is just that word it's that we throw around overrated. so yeah. freely. Yeah. And yeah, then we hook on to it like right. it's just the end all right just don't worry about it so much you'll be happy right trust me right. you'll have moments of happiness but you won't be able to catch them if you're too busy worrying about yeah. being happy so much very right? good point very so. wow well today i'm not going to focus on happiness <laughs> i'm going to focus on just being calm and in yeah. my in my in my body in my center you know just that's also truly something that yeah. is so crucial is like Absolutely. yeah being present and i would say so. you know if you are going through a really tough time as we all do and some more difficult than others yeah. um, really focus on the moment to moment don't mm-hmm. worry so much about, you know, everyone's the future. Oh, you know, you'll be fine. You'll get through this. Yeah. You know, there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel. Forget the tunnel. Forget the light. Mm-hmm. Just literally moment by moment, just get through to the next moment. Just keep going. So right? that's it's what like, you're teaching people to you just go moment to yeah. moment. Focus on those moments, getting through the day. You know, that's a big success. Mm-hmm. You know, you might not see the light right. as quickly as you had hoped. And right. that's okay, too. Sometimes you just have to accept the circumstances and yeah. that sometimes things are really tough right. and really dire. But they're not tough forever. But they're not tough forever. Yeah. But don't worry about when they won't be tough again because that sort of puts so much anxiety on people like, oh, why am I feeling better? Why is this not getting better? Right. Why do I still have, you know, mm-hmm. even people struggling with disease, like mm-hmm. anything, it's just, it's, yes. it's this constant. I haven't like, lost the weight. I need to be I have, better yeah. I, t- tomorrow. I need and, to feel more energized. We live in a culture of immediacy. Yeah. So people just expect everything to happen immediately. 
that's not how life really works. Uh-uh, you know, that's so disclaimer. true. So just mm-hmm. get by, get through the moments to moments and, and you'll build on that and slowly start to feel more successful yeah. in the day to day. Because you'll be empowered. And that success is going to cascade into positivity and a positive outcome. Because I just noticed like when I talk to my girls and they are in some kind of like thing that they're uncomfortable with. Right. I do say to them, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Like, okay. <gasps> I so can't believe I, I do. Love, I love that you're saying that but because I had this conversation with my three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. She was going through some friend issues. I just whatever. realized I'm and I, and stop I, saying that. I was literally about to open my mouth and say, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Gonna be. And it's it's so dismissive. Like, yeah, think about it. If it you is actually, dismissive. It's dismissive. Mm-hmm. It's not their experience. Right now, in this moment, they're, they're not upset. feeling good. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. See, as a parent, we're constantly trying to make it better, make them not feel the feelings. (sighs) Like, God forbid, they're they're upset about anything. Yeah. And that's really damaging them, right? right? Right. So it's like, instead of, I always say to my clients, instead of just trying to talk them through it and coaching them through Mm -hmm. it, ask questions. Help them figure out what's going to make them get to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to sit in the discomfort. Yeah. So it's okay to sit in the discomfort. We ask should the sit in the discomfort. Yeah, yeah, they should. Right, they should. I just, I mean, I don't do that with my clients um, in the health perspective. Right. I do ask questions. Right. I do like. Right. Yeah, it's hard. But when it's the I know. Personal but it's your and the own kids. Kid, and, it's it's hard to yeah. feel our children upset. Yeah. yeah. It's a knee jerk wow. reaction to kind of, you know, oh, you're my baby. I want to mm-hmm. make it better for you. Yeah. But I don't want but you listen, to have a tough when life. Learning how to walk. We don't hold them up and put them in no. a brace and start dragging them across the floor. No. Right? What do they we figure do it when out. they fall down? We say, mm-hmm. oh, you're, you do, you're great. Come on. You can do it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Get up again. And they do it mm-hmm. without us. They walk. Yeah. And so they can you know. go through life without us too. So it's the same. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, really beautiful. But it's hard. Oh, I know how hard it so is. <laughs> it's just a constant push and pull. But yeah. we, it's almost like we have to think of ourselves with an imaginary rubber band on our wrist mm-hmm. to keep snapping yeah. and snapping yeah. and like just get out of the habit of doing that. You have just given me a really wealth of information <laughs> that I thought, you know, I was like, <laughs> everything was so smooth. But now, yeah, I need that. I need that reminder very much so. Well, so thank you. So I ask all my guests yeah. on the show, if you had to sum up your mission in one word, what would it be? Oh, in one word. In one word. My mission. Um, empowerment. Nice. No one said that, I think. No one. It's true. That's because only because I want to find a word that encompasses strength and growth. And yeah. that's what I hope to help people do. Yeah. It's not just about living and surviving and functioning. It's about really how do you use your pain and grow from it? Because we all experience pain. Right. So right. How, do we, how do we digest it in a way that serves us? Right. And I know for myself, I've done that with all the illnesses and all the right, things that you know. have gone on in my life. Yeah. I've, I, and I pinch myself because I'm so grateful for all those experiences, all the bad times, I think, and all the rough times. I'm like, thank God I had those. Right, but it's I wouldn't so be here. hard in the moment. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And really so hard. And so it's so hard. It's so much easier to say in in, in rush, right? right? So it's it's about when you're in it. How do you how do you react? Yeah, and that's really what creates that strength, and and you know, yeah, and that yeah. growth. Right, but, but well, yes. thank you, thank, thank you, you for having me. thank you for being on. Yeah.